All right, so after a lot of hammering and pounding and swearing, we have the exhaust on. Um, just took a minute to figure out the orientation because, you know, we have two different downpipes left and right. We have two different mid pipes left and right. And um, since uh, Darren, our boy that built all this, isn't here, I had to just try and like puzzle piece it together. Took a couple tries, but we're in. Moving on to the scatter shield. I'm gonna pull these O2s out. I'm gonna relocate these up to the top side. They're far enough away from the turbo, especially if the turbo's moving forward, that that won't be an issue. It'll be actually better on the uh, the lines because they're always a little tight to reach uh, before. And lines, I mean wires. So, and that'll give a little more room on this bell housing too, because this plate's gonna come like right through here. So, we gotta make some room. And then, like I mentioned, we're gonna come through the top side of this guy, and then the oil feed lines, and then the radiator feed lines are gonna just skate over the top of that scatter shield, which is gonna be about this thick. So, it's gonna be tight right here, getting those lines through, but it will be okay, so. Time to start cutting. The twin turbo car is getting a little bit of a makeover, I mean, so are all the cars. But um, double checking our fluids. So this one is the fast and tensions powered VQ. It's actually a 35, not 37, out of a 350Z HR because it has a little less, uh, less complexity in the top end. It doesn't have the variable valve lift, it just has the variable cam timing. The fast and tensions kit actually bolts right up to it the same way. And what we did on this car was not only freshen up delivery a little bit, uh, add some new stripes, get it to the 2020 scheme. So I'm really digging it. It's like the fluorescent orange up here, just giving it a nice big color hit. We're going to add some more to it. You know, we got little hits like on the Nismo wing, on the inside the APR wing, on the roof. And uh, we're gonna do a couple more little stripes on the headlights and the front bumper and everything to put some color up there. Uh, Daytona is the one doing that for us. You've probably seen him in Blackout. Uh, Dylan's brother, he's an awesome uh, vinyl guy. We got four speed dog box in this thing now. First time this car's ever had a four speed, so I'm really stoked on that. And then we also have the Winters in this one. So this car is now full race car drivetrain. Has never been in this car before. It's always been the stock Z drivetrain. And Nate's just double checking the fluids underneath. I'm double checking the fluids up top. And we're going to fire this thing up and run it through the gears. On this car, I actually use Valvoline Diesel 1540 because we use the Race uh, Pro V um, Valvoline Race 2050 synthetic on the race cars. But on these cars, uh, they are a little happier with the 40 weight. So a real good cheap 40 weight oil or even just any oil to use in these cars. Not necessarily 40 weight, but the diesel oil comes 1540. It's very, very typical. It has um, ultra high zinc, so it really helps clean the motors. We actually used to run that oil in the V8 cars. So our super awesome, reliable V8 engine program that we had going for five years with MA Motorsports. So the other thing I really like about this car is it was actually the first rear mount radiator car that we ever built. Uh, built it with Brian at MA. And it's a little different layout than what we do now, but it's funny because we're actually kind of going full circle. At first we thought this was um, too much weight towards the front, not enough in the back, and the car had like a lower weight percentage. And so on the race car, like I've said in the past, we started moving everything really far back. It got too much weight in the rear, and now we're kind of moving things back around and getting it all even. But on this car, the fuel cell is up on the front side versus the back side of this big support that we are not allowed to cut out of the car, um, per the rules. So ideally, I would have this thing like straddling it right in the center, but we aren't allowed to do that. So I have it behind it and a few things in front, the oil tanks up here on the pro car, the nitrous bottles right here, uh, the radiator standing up back here. But anyway, um, we used to have a big scoop right here that went up to the window, but it blocked out all this cool fab work. So we took it out because I don't think the scoops do anything. They don't seem to work. They don't seem to help direct any flow. Um, the ones from the sides of the cars do seem to work, but the ones that are trying to pull air in uh, from the rear window area, it's all just low pressure turbulent air. It's not really forcing anything down into the rad itself. The fans are doing all the work. So we pulled the scoop out to show off the fab work instead of just seeing like a big piece of sheet metal right here. We also upgraded the battery to, we got the Odyssey 34 series back here. I had the um, 925, which is about half as thick, a little more reliable as in, um, it's, it's twice as strong, so even if it drops um, you know, a little bit of voltage from sitting for so long, it still has plenty to fire the car up. So, well, we'll find out right now, right? So, got to key it on, and we'll go from there. 
one thing I love about this car is just how clean and simple it is in here. I, uh, when I first built this car, I took out all the vents and the uh, little cubby and all that and just filled it in with carbon, put the Motec PDM switch panel right there. Everything super clean and tidy in here. All right. It feels freaking perfect. Time to sit on the ground and rip a freaking skid. All right, so here's how you build a scatter shield for an FD car. So it looks like what I was talking about. We got some four by quarter inch plate, which um, in the rule says it has to be uh, protruded an inch past the rotating assembly. So this is plenty wide enough to get all of that covered in. And this guy is going to sit up yonder way. And we're just gonna start building basically a giant stop sign around this thing. Catch all of the rotating assembly. Kind of bring it down there, a little flat plate, and just back up and around. So just going to take a bunch of measurements and see what we can do. This is gonna be the tightest spot right here. Trying to figure out the best way to get around this. I gotta move these O2s like I mentioned. This guy's gonna sit right in there. And we're gonna flange off of that and get it up against that uh, training tunnel. And that's where it's gonna bolt in. We got this little <laughs> extractor setup going on here. Slide her down, get another chunk. Freaking nailed it. Pull this bell housing back off. We're getting super close. Seven went there. Gonna put some tacks on these bad boys. Come on. You can do better than that. There you go. Something. Let's see what this thing looks like. Oh yeah. Just Lego on this thing together. All right, the top ring is just about ready. So, my boy Billy's about to sink a couple nut certs in the training tunnel. So we have something bolted to. So we gotta get this thing fixed um, to some capacity before we can really move on. Cause we gotta make it two pieces. The upper's gonna bolt in and the lower's gonna bolt in, so. And Dylan's got these cool little weld certs. Some little threaded pieces. Drill a hole, pop it in, weld it in. Yes, sir. Well, uh, the next step is to make the little ears. Take a caliper, do a quick little measurement to find the middle. And just take it and scribe it. You got a nice straight line. So at the Crazy Cart Invitational, Dylan here decided to go a little hot route with his car and banged it into the wall. He's trying to figure out how to pull this thing down and out. So I was like, what about your little two fender anchor deal? So they're gonna put a strap around that, tie that to that, and give her an old yink. <laughs> Custom framework. Yeah, what do you know about framework? Nothing at all. Nothing, Jimmy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, here's your problem right here. Got it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Ooh. Like we can get it to move, that's no issue. It's just get it to stay. Oh man, I think I got cut off. Ah. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, man. That was a lot of heaving and hoeing, and uh, it looks the same. It looks the same, and it's just unbelievable how much that stuff springs back. Dude. It was moving a lot. Yeah. Couldn't well, believe yeah. it. Moving's not the issue. Getting it to stay there. Yeah, apparently. That's why we just cut off the broken stuff. That's what I'm saying. Frame rail can't be bent. Cut it off, dude. That's, that's right. 
So, now that we have these little flanges made, got those bolted in, they're looking pretty good. But when I grab my dealio here, this is the top half, like I was talking about. Soup that guy in. See how that side kind of butts right up? And then that side brings it right out to that piece. So, throw a tack on her, and then I can build out the rest of it. Ain't nothing going through that. Where do you know? It stayed. Tapping these holes. Quick tip about tapping metric holes. The drill bit you need for tapping a metric hole. All you do is take the size of the hole, in this case 10 millimeter, minus the pitch of the thread, in this case 1.5. So you need an 8.5 millimeter hole. There you go. Thread in. Done. We'll paint it, put it into the car, and um, get back to the fun part. Get this thing running. Tight tolerance is in there, but they fit. Funniest part is, half these wires aren't even used. <laughs> 